I Sing a Song of the Saints of God was composed for children. And in the hymnal 1940, it was in the section Hymns for Children. When the hymnal 1982 came out, there was some resistance to it, partly because it was childlike or childish, and partly because it seemed to be cultural specific. For instance, you could meet them in school or in lanes or at sea, in church or in trains or in shops or at tea. But there was a letter writing campaign and the, the place of this hymn and this tune was assured. The tune was written by John Henry Hopkins for this text. There were several people in an illustrious family named John Henry Hopkins. The Right Reverend John Henry Hopkins was the first Bishop of Vermont. He was born in 1792. His son was Father Theodore Hopkins, born in 1828. And his son, the composer of this tune, was John Henry Hopkins, born in 1861. He died in 1945. And this last one, the composer of this tune, John Henry Hopkins, was the nephew of a man named John Henry Hopkins, Jr., who wrote the music and words for We Three Kings of Orient are. Incidentally, We Three Kings of Orient is the only Christmas carol sung all over the English-speaking world where the words and music were written by the same person. Now, uh, this tune, you, you know, you can name a tune. If you write a hymn tune, you can call it anything you want. You can name it after your dog. You can name it after your mother. You can name it after a place, uh, a car, anything at all. This hymn tune was named after an, a community on an island in Lake Champlain where Hopkins retired, Grand Isle. The tune is a, a childlike march with pretty fast harmonic motion. That means how, how often the chords change. <laughs> And then in the middle, the harmonic motion uh, gets twice as slow. So the harmonic, the harmonies are at the end of the first phrase or second phrase is like. speeds up, uh, goes twice as fast. This reminds me almost of those old uh, tap dance uh, routines where they do fancy rhythms in between the staccato chords. So this is a very popular uh, hymn tune uh, for all generations. Now the next hymn tune uh, was, is a 20th century tune written by Richard Dirksen who was the organist and choir master of the National Cathedral. And it was composed for the installation of the presiding bishop, John Allen, uh, the national uh, bishop of the Episcopal Church in Washington Cathedral in 1974, to the tune, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Now that, uh, that text has been sung to uh, a tune written in the 19th century. Kind of a square hymn tune, never gets very far away from F major. So Richard Dirksen wrote a brand new tune uh, with lots of climactic moments and very modern, interesting chords. And it has a great climax on the hosannas. So let me play that for you.
Rejoice ye pure in heart. But we're singing it to come we that love the Lord. Here's a, um, a quotation from the composer Richard Dirksen of this hymn tune. The music reflects the quality of rejoicing most precisely at the two hosannas which rise like daily prayers pointing the way and presaging the ward the reward at the end to raise hosannas forever in his presence and with the company of heaven in life eternal the tune name honors the very reverend francis b sayer who is dean of the national cathedral dirksen's boss from 1951 to 1978 and he was a cherished friend of Dirksen. Dean Sayer retired to Martha's Vineyard in a community called Vineyard Haven, and that's the name of the tune. Incidentally, Frank Sayer, the dean of the cathedral, was the last person born in the White House. His mother was the daughter of Woodrow Wilson. So there's always fascinating backstories to all these texts and tunes. So here we have the first one, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God, a tune written for those words. And this one, a tune was not written for Come We That Love the Lord, but with the Hosannas, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> 